Today I want to talk about how broken overpowered sap is. This ammo type is insane. And I think Columbo really does show well how insane this ammo type is. A ship with some of the worst dispersion and worst range at tier 10, as far as battleships are concerned, is among the best in my opinion, simply because of this ammo type. It does everything well. and. To me, it seems like Wargaming could have done a little better job of introducing it in a way that didn't just break the game. If we're talking about conceptually, what does an ammo type do? Armor piercing is high alpha, but high risk, and it requires you to use it sparingly and when it makes sense. It won't be good all the time. It's only good in a very specific, narrow set of circumstances. High Explosive, on the other hand, is the exact opposite. Low alpha damage, but consistent damage output. At any angle, at any range, you're just gonna get damage. And conceptually, I think that's a really cool balancing decision that you have to weigh out. And of course, different ships have different advantages for each one, and it makes more sense to shoot one ammo type or the other, depending on the ship and its gimmick. But Sap just kind of gets both of those positives. <laughs> you get the high alpha damage out of the AP, but then you also get the consistency of HE at the same time. It seems a little bit overpowered. And so much so that you can give the worst dispersion and worst range to a battleship at tier 10, and it's still gonna perform extremely well just because of this ammo type. We all know how good Venezia Sap is and how good that ship is. Of course, it doesn't struggle with dispersion like the Columbo does, but even the Columbo, with its seemingly poor dispersion, gets some massive salvos when it really shouldn't, right? We're thinking of a ship like the Petro Pavlos there that we hit for 15K at the beginning of the match there. He's bow in at long range. That's theoretically the worst possible target to go after considering how small and skinny that ship is and how difficult that ship is to damage traditionally. But we still got a third of his HP pool gone instantly. And yes, we did get lucky with dispersion there, obviously. It really just goes to show how broken Columbo would have been if it had normal battleship dispersion. Let's say even Kerfirst levels of dispersion. It would have been insane. So to me, it seems like this ammo type is really what's carrying this ship. And I wish that it was a little different. I wish Wargaming had done a better job implementing it so that it didn't feel so unfair to fight against. And what do I mean by that? Well, armor piercing is gonna take a big chunk out of you when you're broadside. And traditionally that means you've made a mistake or you've been caught out. And as frustrating as that can be, it does make sense. And in your head you go, okay, I made a mistake, I messed up and I got hit for it. Fair enough. But when you're angling properly, this sap is still gonna do that alpha damage to you, right? Where HE is something that is just a constant pressure that you have to consider, right? If I push bow in in a battleship, I have to consider that the HE pressure over time is slowly gonna kill me. But this sap pressure, if you push bow in like this Petro is doing, it's gonna kill you very quickly <laughs> and with high alpha damage. Of course, this is, at these closer ranges, a little easier since we overmatch 25 millimeters. Just like armor piercing, whatever the caliber of your gun is, you divide it by 14.3, I believe is the calculation, and you get your overmatch value. So for 381 millimeter guns, you overmatch 25, you don't overmatch 27. That's really all you need to know, at least at tier 10. And it works reasonably well but it does result in a few weird scenarios. Along with the pen on this sap, this Austin can be citadeled by our sap. <laughs> so one of the disadvantages of sap instantly is recovered when you're facing a very light cruiser. And in fact, it's even more consistent against ships like that. Unfortunately, we aren't able to get the shot off in time and the Austin dips away. And we kind of put ourselves in a pretty horrible position, pushing into a massive crossfire. And yes, I know there's really not much of an enemy team at A right now, but it's possible that there's Shimakaze torpedoes on their way to us, since he does have the 12 kilometer torps, and depending on where he launched them from, it's possible we were caught in a crossfire there. But our smoke is just enough to get us out of the way. 
I can understand putting the Columbo in the game with a large number of guns, with sap, or with this fuel smoke. All of those things individually make sense as interesting gimmicks, right? 16 guns, we haven't really had that at tier 10 before. A fuel smoke on a battleship, oh, that's interesting. And even sap on a battleship, it's okay. You know, we saw it on Venezia. It was pretty overpowered. They tuned it down a little bit, making it so you can't just full pen people outside. I think it was 16 kilometers at any angle, <laughs> right? At, I'm pretty sure release Venezia was able to just get full pens on everything outside of 15, 16 or 17 kilometers. So if you caught a Stalingrad bow in at those ranges, you could just rain shells on him and do 15K damage every 20 seconds. It was ridiculous. And I'm glad they fixed the pen angles on that ship. But I think with the Columbo, they really should have given it worse pen angles yet. Maybe worse alpha damage as well or something. Yes, we're dealing with a longer reload. Yes, we're dealing with less range. But when every salvo pretty much isn't gonna overpen, you're getting way more consistent damage especially compared to your armor piercing counterparts, right? Something like a Montana, a Kerr first, a Yamato, they all have to worry about overpenning. This thing doesn't, right? That massive weakness of armor piercing where you have to catch someone broadside and hit the right spot so you don't overpen, you don't gotta worry about that. And at the same time with HE, you get all of that consistency of HE out of a sap shell with the alpha damage of armor piercing. It just seems a little bit ridiculous and a little bit much to me. And you might be thinking to yourself, why are you complaining about this when you're having an excellent game in it? Well, I don't want to just take advantage of overpowered or things that I would consider overpowered and post a bunch of good games like that. I want to have a game where I feel like I can play any of my ships and have an equal chance of doing well. A ship even that came out in 2016, 2015. But in the current meta, it does seem like if you're not playing a ship that's been released more recently, you're putting yourself at a bit of a disadvantage. That's not always the case. And that's not true for every single older ship. But I mean, let's be honest. All right, if you're playing a Zhao, why aren't you just playing a Venezia? It does that sneaky high alpha damage roll just better in pretty much every way other than concealment but that's mitigated by a fuel smoke, right? And a Venezia is far scarier to fight than a Zhao is, especially for a DD, right? And that's how you win a lot of games in a Zhao, traditionally, is pushing up close to the enemy and uh, pushing up close to a cap, sorry, with your teammates, with your DD, your DD spots the enemy DD, and you get that massive alpha damage in. That's how you win games in a Zhao, you get that high impact damage out early. Well, Venezia just does that better. And there's more examples of that. And Zhao, of course, is a ship that is in desperate need of buffs compared to its counterparts, right? Like we all know that's one of the weakest cruisers in the game. But I think Sap is something that just really shouldn't have entered the game as it is. I think it should have had way worse pen angles, maybe if it had normal AP pen angles, but it didn't have to suffer with overpens. That would make a little bit of sense because then you get that extra utility of not having to deal with an overpen, but you still have to think about when you should be shooting sap, right? I think that's an interesting thing. Or if you're gonna give it these ridiculous pen angles, maybe lower the alpha damage so that it's not higher than the armor piercing ammunition you have. I don't know. It just seems a little bit ridiculous that even when I come up to a situation where armor piercing would theoretically be best, right? A broadside battleship at close range where it's unlikely I'm going to overpen him. I'm still going to stick with the sap because I just trust it more. It's more consistent in a scenario where you would traditionally assume armor piercing would be better. And we just take out that Columbo just like that. Very, very simple. Very, very easy. I think the solution would be one of those things to limit the pen angles, limit the alpha damage, or do something about overpens, maybe adding a little bit more or making the pen on the sap a little bit less. It's just not very fun to fight against this. Of course, that Columbo deserved to take a huge hit because he was broadside. 
Just like I'm broadside to this thunder and I deserve to take a huge hit. It makes sense, right? That is the game we've been playing for the last six years, and that is what happens. We take a big hit from this thunder. But that thunder was pretty well angled to us, and we hit him just as hard. <laughs> uh, yeah, this is the issue with sap. And this thunder angles pretty much completely into me. Not quite, but almost. And you'll notice that I'm gonna hold my shot. And part of that is because I haven't played Columbo for a while, so I didn't actually understand how good the pen angles are. But eventually we are gonna shoot this guy at a pretty steep angle. And well, <laughs> yeah, you can see you can see me zoom in and think, oh, I don't know if I can pen at that angle, right? Because I'm so used to playing armor piercing ships. And then it's getting to the point where oh, I should just shoot anyway, right? He's gonna have to turn for the torps or something or I just want to get the kill and get some damage. So he's at what, 12 degrees? A 12 degree angle? <laughs> and we get seven full pens. <laughs> right, like I could have shot the instant my reload was up and I would have had a huge amount of damage into that guy. That shot right there basically was the thought of, I need to make a video talking about sap a little bit because that is ridiculous. I have the alpha damage of armor piercing, but you can't angle to it. it pretty, you pretty much can't. That thunder would have to go even farther bow in than 12 degrees, 12. Armor piercing, you gotta go to like 25 usually, right? And then you're pretty, pretty well safe. Um, of course, 30 degrees can work, but I don't know. Usually there's some weird uh, magic pen angles that happen. We do swap to the armor piercing, and it does do good damage. You can see we just slapped that GK for a ton of HP. And I think that's where the thought of reducing the pen on the sap is interesting. When I'm fighting a Kerr first, I'm forced to switch to the armor piercing because my sap can't pen his belt armor. It can't even pen his upper belt. And I think that makes it a more interesting ammo choice, where I do have to decide whether... I should use it or my armor piercing. This sh Shikoshima, I mean, let's be honest, you pen it with sap pretty much everywhere <laughs> outside of his Citadel armor. So you hit it anywhere, you're gonna do huge damage with the sap. But I had AP loaded still, so we're gonna try and use that to kill him. I end up hitting the island. I should really have trees turned off if I wanted to maximize my damage output and know where to where I could can and cannot aim. But uh I think the game looks terrible when these islands are bare, so I'm trying to cover them up as much as possible. But again, the armor piercing into the back of this curve first, we do a massive amount of damage. So the AP is not even bad on this ship, but that sap is just so unbelievably consistent that you just kind of almost forced to use it all the time. Forced is a bad word, but you just choose to use it all the time because it's just so much better. A weird feature of the Columbo is that we just got, I think, 30k <laughs> into our stern somehow. Um, yeah, and we're going to die here. No questions about that. But 250k game with three kills, that's a pretty solid result, especially with the brawl at the end there with some curfers. That was a really fun game for me to play, but I can't help but think that some of the people that I shot with Sap might have felt a little bit different not really being able to angle into it at all and having that kind of alpha damage, that might not be the most enjoyable experience to fight against. So that was the match. I had fun. I really did. But I wish that they would do something to make the game a little bit more balanced, a little bit more friendly for people to play. And that applies to everything. And that doesn't apply to SAP only. It applies to aircraft carriers. It applies to subs. It applies to HE. It applies to AP. I wish this game was more intuitive for people to learn and get better at. I just think that as you go up the tiers, if things are consistent, right, you know that going broadside gets punished. You know that going bow in, you're tankier, but you're more susceptible to that damage over time of HE. I think you just learn better. When the feedback is consistent, it's easier to learn and get better at something. I just think that as you play this game and the more ships that are added, the feedback gets less consistent and it's more difficult to learn how to play this game. This is the build that I'm running. I think with Sansonetti, you do want to run it on whichever Italian ship you play the most, whether it's a battleship or a cruiser. 
because the gun feeder is just so useful on this ship. Vigilance is a great new tier two skill. And since the Columbo does not get hydro, I think it's really, really useful for pushing in. It also buffs your torque protection, which is nice. I am, as you can see, running this hybrid secondary build. I don't think it's that good, <laughs> especially since these 90 millimeter secondaries, and they actually don't pen anything, but they're there for fires. I do think that if you ran full concealment instead of the manual aiming for secondaries, you'd do better, but I'm looking to have fun and secondaries are just fun for me. <laughs> so that's why I'm running them, but you could definitely argue, make an argument that instead of the aiming, you get the better reload when you're within secondary range, but I think just the standard boring fire prevention, concealment, and uh, emergency repair expert, I think that's the standard build. And then you would take Adrenaline Rush and maybe basic survivability. I'm still messing around with these heal builds. I do like them a lot, but still not sure if it's better than the standard build. And as far as equipment is concerned, I'm running range mod. I don't think there's much shame left in that considering the way Wargaming's balanced the game to be a very campy passive meta and subs are just gonna continue that. So range mod everything in the future is what uh, it seems like we're going to. Concealment, pretty standard upgrade. Steering gears, I think you guys know by now that I enjoy having these 360 turrets and being able to swap back and forth. And steering gears allows me to do that more and just dodge more sh shells, torpedoes, all that stuff easier. Aiming systems mod, I think you do want to buff the dispersion on this ship of all ships, right? So that is the build, and that is the ship. I hope you guys enjoyed, and uh, let me know what you think about SAP. And if you think there are ways they could balance it, or if they should just take it out of the game entirely. Or maybe you think it's fine. Let me know. Thank you for watching, and I hope you have a great day.